Okay, I wanted to go over an art book that, that I think is an underrated human anatomy book. And there are a lot of great anatomy books out there that get a lot of credit. The um, Artistic Anatomy by Dr. Paul Roche is kind of the standard. Uh, John Vanderpool's great. George Bridgman is excellent. Um, there's the Elliot Goldfinger book, which is a more modern book, which you know, I don't think um, artistically is as great, but it's very thorough and it's helpful. Uh, it helped, it's helped me a lot um, with muscle insertions and uh, origins, has pictures of models. Uh, just a little more science-y. So there, there are a lot of great resources and each book will teach you something different. Um, but this little book, when I found this book, it, it was really a relief because all of a sudden I had a book that was small, clear, very helpful, and aesthetically beautiful. And I just don't see this book getting a lot of attention. So it's, it has a long title, Anatomical Diagrams for the Use of Art Students. And it's by a Scottish artist, James M. Dunlop. And I really don't know much about him. So if any of you can, can uh, educate me about who he was, uh, all I know is, is he taught at the Glasgow Art School. And, you know, I, I was able to find some, some little auction results for landscapes. I believe they were his, but I could be wrong. I mean, James Dunlop is kind of a common name, so. So anyway, uh, this was the first book I got, and you know, the book was printed in 1899, and I don't know if there were more than one edition. Um, this one's a first edition. So it's really survived, what, 120 years? Pretty well, and, I, and the, the pages are nice and heavy, and they are like a three plate colored print. Now, luckily, Dover Publications has reprinted this book. So you can get it for like $8. And even these antique copies are not that expensive, at least right now. So, what I thought I'd do is go through, go through this book, and one of my colleagues and students uh, saw that my book was in su such, you know, horrible shape that that he picked up this one for me, um, and and the colors in this one are different. So it's kind of worth pointing out that when you buy these old books, there's there's always variation. Uh, this one's a little. A little oranger. This one's slightly lighter. So I think I'll I'll bend the old one instead of bending the new one, and I'll just try to walk you through this book and tell you why I think it's underrated and uh, really helpful. So number one, I, I like that it's not all one color. He uses, you know, three colors, and a lot of times what he's doing is separating the bones from the muscle, or in this case, the tendons are in green and the, the muscle fibers are in red. So I think that's really great. Um, he has a fair amount on the neck and face. Um, you know, I think Roche is a little bit weak on the face. Not, I mean, I'm not saying he didn't know it, but certain, you know, certain books emphasize different things. Like one of you guys commented last night that, you know, does the, the they were asking, does the Lenteri talk about hands and feet anatomically? And I realized, well, he kind of doesn't, you know, but he's so good on other stuff that, you know, it's still a great book. So I would say for gross anatomy, Dunlop is, is wonderful because 
he's very thorough and he's very aesthetically beautiful. And that's the thing, when I when I bring up these old books, a lot of a lot of, you know, younger artists and modern uh, you know, type artists or animators will say, you know, what's with these old books? Like there's new books now. You don't need to be stuffy, you know. <laughs> and my response to that is that yeah, I mean, a lot of people know anatomy today and they're they're uh, doing a fantastic job animating and and such, but but the older books have have a more beautiful aesthetic. You know, the culture understood beauty in a in a much richer, deeper way. And you can disagree with that. But you know, I think it's evident in the artwork, in the architecture, in the literature, the poetry, the music from that era. So I don't see any problem with looking back to artists of the past. I think the training was better. Um, you know, the, the aesthetic for beauty was, was stronger and, and uh, more understood in the culture. And they were just surrounded by it. You know, now we have a lot of, a lot of ugliness um, in our cities and uh, even in, in the suburbs, the way the houses are built are just not, they're not um, focused around design. They're focused around maybe just getting the house built as quickly as possible and uh, maybe they design it on a computer in 10 minutes, I don't know. But anyway, you know what I mean. Old houses are, are more beautiful so getting back to Dunlop, um, you know, he, he has a clear description of the skeletal system. Uh, I love these, these profile views where he's, he's not just showing you the anatomy, but he's showing you how the fi figure is balanced, how the limbs are tapered. This is a fabulous little um, line sketch of the geometric blocks of the body standing like a soldier and then animated into contrapposto. He superimposes those blocks onto the skeleton for you. Another one front view with some anatomical landmarks. Very thorough with the hands. So whoever asked about the hands and feet, Dunlop is a good one. I mean, he, he talks about every tendon in the finger and the foot. Uh, he'll break away and give you a, a smaller lesson on the side um, on a bone or on a on a group of muscles. So I don't mean to jump around, but I didn't really have a plan for this. I just wanted to to give Dunlop a shout out. Um, so he he labels all the muscles on the side, and he does tell you the origin and insertion along the way. It's not necessarily like a big list. It's like, as he goes, he talks about it. So, so here we go, a little bit on the facial features. Pretty good, I mean, not the best nose I've ever seen, but I think, I think his strength is more in the anatomy and the, um, the bones and the explanations. You know, again, I love this, this color difference because it's very easy to read that the that the bones are separate from the tendons and the tendons are separate from the muscle. Um, you know, this sketch I think is from Gray's Anatomy and he's kind of simplified it for you with the color coding. Beautiful rib cages. Here's the serratus muscle. I just did a lesson on that um, for my Patreon subscribers. You know, and really check out the Patreon. It's only $10 a month. Um, and you can, you can try it out, you can leave anytime, come back anytime. I really don't care, I mean, I get it. I, I subscribe to stuff and I, and I leave all the time. And uh, the videos are there. So uh, here's the trapezius, I just did trapezius and latissimus dorsi. Here's the deeper muscles of the neck, nicely color-coded for you. Um, you know, I love that he's breaking out the scapula and appreciating the, the style of it and the size of it. And he's talking about all that stuff. Um, great three-quarter back views. 
Okay, the leg. This, this chapter on the leg is just invaluable. Um, the fact that he broke a line drawing away from the anatomy and just showed the taper of the leg on the standing contrapposto is, is so useful. Um, he gives you a little diagram on the knee bones. You know, those, those knee landmarks are key. When you get into the, the muscles, you need to know these landmarks. And this little pneumatic here, where he has a rectangle with a diagonal through it and three and three, he's, he's giving you an easy way to perceive of the, the muscles of the quad and the adductors separated by the sartorius muscle. So he was a good teacher. I mean, I, I don't know what his students thought of him, but I bet he was a great teacher. Okay, so it's those little little things like that. Very thorough on the the forearm and the and the lower leg. I know those are two things that tend to be overwhelming because there's so many muscles, especially in the forearm. Um, very thorough on the foot. He'll give you the the morphology on the surface, meaning that you know how we see it in the skin first, because you need to be able to spot those anatomical landmarks on the surface. Um, anatomy, you know, as enticing as it is, it shouldn't just be a, um, you know, some kind of anatomical exercise. It, it should be put to use so that you can express something in your figures. So much more thorough on the hands and feet than Lanteri. My last video on, on Lanteri um, was really a claim that um, it was the best overall sculpture book, how to sculpt book. This is not a how to sculpt book, it's an anatomy book. Okay, so beautiful hands. Um, and they're in natural poses. That's another thing. A lot of, a lot of modern um, figurative artists, they always have to make everything like weird and like, I don't know, uh, like a corpse. I, I don't get it. I, I don't know the aesthetic, but here, this is how we see hands. Someone gesturing, someone you know, just holding their hand at rest. And then on that same topic, a page of just natural poses um, to the arms and legs. And he's labeling the anatomical landmarks on the surface. These are some pictures of real bones, not plastic bones. You know, the real ones are, are more beautiful. And, you know, these, these drawings are packed full of information. Don't overlook them. Um, he's breaking down the, the vertebrae of the spine, which is something I mentioned in my last back video. You know, here's that real skeleton, a very English looking skeleton. And a little talk on proportions at the end. Unfortunately, this was ripped, but. Um, okay, so, so the, the Dunlop book, I highly recommend. And again, you can get it through Dover. Maybe you can get it digitally on your Kindle. You know, I, I kind of like to have the real thing just in case the power goes out. And I thought I'd mention one more book. This is a modern book. Don't laugh. It's got a <laughs> kind of a funny cover. Um, and this is by uh, Frédéric de la Vie. I don't speak French, but I'm guessing that's how you say it. And I think this guy is a weightlifter, but he's also an artist and pretty damn good. I think this is a Hercules sculpture and he's imposed his, uh, his anatomy on it. But the thing I like about this book is He's showing you um, the muscle's function. That's, that's the primary goal of this book, I think, is to show you, you know, if you want to build up a certain muscle, how do you build it up? And um, it's great because you can learn all the muscles, um, but if you don't know what they do, I think that that'll leave you a little bit naive. So, no, aesthetically, this is 
doesn't have that old world beauty to it, but I got to admire the author because he, he wrote it and illustrated it. Um, and again, it's color coded. Color coded always just helps me keep it simple, you know, to focus on a certain thing. And I think the most helpful thing in this book, besides the, the thorough, you know, analysis of um, each muscle, is he does some comparative anatomy with a um, human being, a chimpanzee and a horse, basically showing how the, the gluteus maximus on a human is, is big and developed, which is very unique to being a human being. Because we stand upright for a long period of time. Also, our leg locks. See, the chimpanzee can't stand up for very long, whereas we can, we can, uh, we can stand for hours. We can, we can walk for days. You know, just keep going. Uh, uh, and in the back, he's got this handy chart um, categorizing the muscles into the main muscle groups. So instead of just trying to learn each muscle individually and getting confused and overwhelmed and quitting, <laughs> you can you can kind of categorize them into these colors. So there are many times when I go, well, what does that muscle do? And I go to this chart and I look, I look where at its location and I look at the color and I go, oh, it's part of the quadriceps or it's, you know, it's part of the, the flexors of the arm or whatever. And that just, just kind of puts me on the right path again. Okay, so this is uh, strength training anatomy. Hopefully you can find it online. I, I, this was given to me by a friend who wasn't even an artist. He was a, a, you know, a guy that worked out, so. Okay, so uh, I would check out this book, but, but primarily get the, um, the Dunlop book first. You know, that, that'll put you on the right path as far as aesthetics and anatomical accuracy.